What is going on guys? Welcome to the N1 Fitness Podcast. Today we're going to be chatting about how to avoid holiday weight gain. Granted, the holidays are a little bit different this year. They're looking uh, unique, we'll say, but I still thought that this episode would be helpful for you guys. So we're going to dive into 10 simple and effective tips to maintain your weight this holiday season. Number one is use the scale, okay? You don't wanna hop on the scale in January and be like, shit, I should've just tracked my weight, I'm up 10, 15 pounds now. You can either weigh yourself on a daily basis and watch the general trend, or you can weigh yourself under the same circumstances each week, so say on a Monday each week, first thing in the morning, before you've eaten, after you've hit the bathroom. Use the scale, watch that trend. It will help you a ton as far as maintaining your weight. Personally, I love to use the traffic light approach with my clients, and this is exactly how I implement it. Let's say you are 160 pounds. Your green light zone is going to be between, say, 158 and 162. That means everything is going smoothly. Keep doing what you're doing, okay? Your yellow light zone might be between say 163 and 165. That means you might wanna start to clean things up a little bit. It's a yellow light, yield, right? Red light is 165 plus. That means stop what you're doing, like get back on track ASAP because things are starting to go downhill quick. Using the scale and this traffic light approach means that you will never get too far off of your target. And basically, you could even use this traffic light approach for the rest of your life to maintain your weight long term and sustain your weight loss goal. So I highly recommend implementing the traffic light approach as well as weighing yourself on a regular basis to keep things in check. Number two is to implement the rule of twos. So the rule of twos is you never have two consecutive meals in a row that are full of poor choices. You also never have two consecutive days in a row where you are making unhealthful food choices. Now, this means that absolute worst case scenario, you're going to be eating well 50% of the time, okay? That's absolute bottom of the barrel. And you take the snowball effect in regards to poor food choices out of the equation, meaning it's really common to make one poor choice and then get into that fuck it mentality and make another poor choice and another one. All of a sudden, you've strung together days, maybe even a week, possibly even two weeks of poor eating together. That is when you hop on the scale in early January and go, shit, I messed up. This way, the rule of twos makes it so you're eating well at least 50% of the time and you're always sort of alternating worst case scenario between a healthful decision and maybe a not so healthful decision. Number three is to keep it light during the day. So if you know that you have a family dinner that night or you're going out with some friends, you might have a calorie dance meal and a few bevies, you might as well go light during the day, focus on lean proteins, veggies, and possibly even some fruit. Skip the starchy carbs, skip the added fats. That way you can create some room for that more calorie dense meal at night and mitigate some of that calorie damage per se. Number four is to hydrate pre-meal. This one's underrated. If you're going to that family dinner and you're just arriving, before you get any drinks or food in you, chug a big glass of water. If you go to a restaurant, you're just sitting down, down that glass of water before you start eating. That is going to fill up your stomach from a volume standpoint, and you are going to spontaneously eat fewer calories and not even think about it. It's a win-win. Number five is to grab a plate. For the love of God, do not be that person standing by the snack table all night grazing, picking at little things here and there and never actually grabbing a plate, taking it and sitting down because you are going to consume way more calories if you are in that grazing type setup because when you grab a plate, you go sit down, you actually have physical evidence of what you've eaten, right? You look at your plate, you might see a couple chicken wing bones, some crackers and cheese, some crumbs from that, maybe a bit of dip that you ate. You have some sort of cognition around how much you've taken in versus in the grazing setup, you have you know, really no clue how many calories you've taken in. So grab a plate, sit down, step away from the snack table, and you are going to be better off for it. 
Number six is to prioritize digestion, okay? So if you make choices that keep your digestion on track, don't have you feel super bloated after eating, you are going to be in a better spot body comp wise and also just sense of well-being wise because you're not gonna ever get to that really over full, overly bloated or lethargic state and therefore your food choices by design in that setup are just going to be better and you're going to consume fewer calories overall. Also, something that I've noticed is that a lot of folks don't actually know what good digestion is because they've never experienced having really good digestion. So what you can do in this case, if you're not sure, is use your skin as a barometer. So if you start to break out, say in the next day or the next couple days after making certain food decisions, you ate something that you didn't tolerate. So now it's time to look back at what maybe those potential culprits are and then potentially eliminate them. Now, the most common culprit when it comes to funky skin is dairy. It's not the case for everybody, but it is the most common culprit. So just keep that in mind. Number seven is to maintain your movement. Now, over the holiday season, your calories tend to climb and you do not want your movement to decline in tandem with that, right? That is a recipe for fat gain. If anything, we want to increase our movement as our calories are climbing up to buffer some of that energy intake. So get your 10,000 steps in per day. And if you're not able to go to the gym or you just don't like going to the gym, you can either bump your steps up or you can also get some at-home workouts in. Even 15 to 20 minute session here and there sprinkled in will help. So keep that movement up. Do not be sedentary while increasing your calories. That is not a good look. Also, it's worth noting that your nutrition habits build off of your movement habits and vice versa. Meaning when you're eating better, you're more likely to move more. And when you're moving more, you're more likely to eat better. So these things work really well in tandem, actually for the better or for the worse. So stay on top of both and they'll help to lend themselves to one another and you can build those habits together. Number eight is to be aware of booze, okay? Be aware of how booze impacts your appetite, even specific types of booze. For example, maybe wine stimulates your appetite but beer crushes your appetite, okay? That's something to keep in mind. Also, just know that your decision making is probably going to take a dip when you've got a buzz on, so you might wanna be careful how much you drink, of course. And then nobody is a healthier version of themselves when they're hungover, so one rule that you can implement is actually only drinking up to a certain point where when you wake up the next day, if you suddenly had amnesia, for example, you wouldn't have known whether you drank or not. That is probably going to put you in maybe the one to two drink range, depending on how big you are. But I like that rule as far as keeping alcohol intake in check for the most part and not having it impact your next day, being hungover, and that snowballing into even more poor food decisions. Number nine is to drive. So building off of our last booze point, if you find it difficult when you're going to a family event or hanging out with friends to keep your alcohol intake in check, just be the DD. That way you put that external mode of accountability in place and you don't even have to think about it and you're also not gonna experience any social pressure because drinking and driving ain't cool. So that should help you keep your alcohol intake you know, within a reasonable limit and not really having to think about it too much by having that external accountability in place. You can also schedule a walk, a workout, or a hike for the next morning with somebody that's going to hold you accountable, okay? Ideally, this isn't going to be someone that was also going out the night prior. This way, you're going to be held to a certain standard. You've got that scheduled in, that movement practice scheduled in, and it makes it more likely for you to behave on the alcohol front. This is all about setting yourself up for success, I'm sure you can see, and with booze, it's especially important. Number 10 is to prioritize sleep. So you're probably gonna have some time off work coming up here over the holidays, and nothing is worse than finishing up your holiday and feeling like you need a vacation from your vacation. So prioritize sleep, that way you're gonna roll into 2021 feeling rested, alert, and recharged. Essentially all of our prior tips are going to lend themselves to quality sleep. So, you know, moving enough, eating well, limiting booze, all that good stuff. And then also what you wanna do is not eat too much or too close to bed because that way your body is not digesting food while you're meant to be sleeping 
And one of the biggest causes of night sweats is actually just eating too much and too close to bed. So mix that and you will get better quality sleep on a nightly basis. I've got one bonus tip for you. A lot of stuff, emotional stuff tends to come up over the holidays. And one of the classic sayings is, you know, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family, you'll find out that you're not. That applies here. Lots of baggage, you could say, comes up around the holidays because, you know, there's just a lot of stress. There's a lot of expectation. There's a lot more time spent with family and a lot of unresolved things come to the surface. So instead of looking at it like you're dreading it, what about looking at it like an opportunity to grow, heal, and then essentially improve your relationships with your family moving forward? So just a little bit of a perspective shift on the front of, you know, stuff coming up over the holidays because it's so common for all of us. If you're interested in personalized one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching or click the link in the description below. Follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness and friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sadu. Lastly, hit subscribe on whatever platform you're listening or watching this on. And I hope you found this useful. I'll catch you on the next one, guys. See you later.